Hey guys. Oh, let me just push it back. Hey, so just give me one second. I noticed um, when I... Okay. Sorry about that. But um, yeah, I actually was just going live or about to go live and notice that my nails are half painted and half not. So just excuse me for one moment while I fix this so I don't look disgusting and really annoy myself. Um, welcome to whoever joined. Thank you so much for joining like so quickly. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, so today we are almost done with these pants. I'm so excited. I can't believe it has taken me 10 live streams to actually get the um, pants cut out of denim, but we are finally here and I am going to be cutting denim out today. All the pattern pieces, potentially sewing, like just get this done. I'm so excited that I might have new pants to wear tomorrow. And um, while we do that, I have a few things I want to talk about. So I am super excited. Okay, perfect. I'm done with that. All right. Okay, so, um, yes. So as far as the pants go, where we're going to start is I want to go to the waistband. All right, I'm gonna need to make sure I have that. And, all right, let's see. And I wanna show you really quickly what I did with the pattern pieces because I actually made some adjustments since yesterday. So they started off as like a long panel for each section of the pants. But I realized that the pants themselves like my original pants are much shorter than the pants that I want to make, which if you think about it's kind of obvious because, hey, welcome. Um, so yeah, it's kind of obvious that these are going to be like a little bit um, longer than the original pants that I'm cutting from because those were mid-rise to low-rise jeans and the jeans that I'm making are ultra high-waisted which is a higher waisted denim than I've ever owned therefore we needed to um, cut this pattern so that we have enough fabric to cover the entire panel so I ended up cutting it and then I made like a little waist panel and I also ended up um, taking off one of the original waistbands um, from the pants and I'm going to use this um, in order to make the waistband for these pants. This waistband is actually longer than what we need so probably um, I am debating between should I keep the buttonhole or should I keep the button because I'm going to have to cut it shorter so I think I'm going to keep the buttonhole. It's tricky because I, I wouldn't be able to use this button again because it's a denim button. So I'm, I don't have the ability to put this on. I don't know if I can. Then again, I'm not sure. I've never tried. But then this thick of a buttonhole like in this denim, I don't. it's going to be complicated for my machine to do it. I think, honestly, I just hate making buttonholes so much. It, they're not hard to do, but I just don't prefer to waste my time on it. So I'm going to keep the buttonhole. And if I have to use a different type of button, that's not the end of the world. What I also want to do, um, since I'm, this is like folded over and, you know, nicely finished. And I cut the previous fabric away. 
I'm actually gonna open it up and then take the fabric that is like left inside and I'm gonna replace, like just sl slip this over the pants when we're done. So I'm just gonna open up this seam right now. So let me get some threads. Why did I say threads? Let me get a seam ripper and some scissors. And I just wanna clean up the threads. Also, let's clean up my work area because this is obnoxious. It's best to just keep all the pieces kind of like to the side. Otherwise it's gonna get really overwhelming. Okay, so today on top of that, I wanted to talk about a few subjects, which is what I was mentioning earlier. So I kind of wanna focus on mindset and really like think about what's important to me and what I wanna focus on in the next few months. Um, it's something that I've been trying to do a lot over the past year, but I feel like over the past month and a half with everything that's been going on, I really have kind of lost focus on, you know, what's really important to me and what I want to focus on. So I just want to go, you know, really take a moment to go through and, you know, focus or not focus, go through and like dissect what is important for me and like what I um, want to make a priority moving forward. And so I want to talk about that and I want to talk about a few other things. I think I'm going to wait a minute to, um, I want to deep dive into that a bit more. But really quickly before that, there is a couple quicker topics that I want to talk about, which is one, my tan, which is you know, improving from yesterday. It was actually a lot darker um, than this about five minutes ago. Um, but I had to go live and I, ju I just put the tanner on before the live stream and you're supposed to wait like six hours before you, you know, wash it off. And I just couldn't come on the live stream without having it washed off because, you know, before you until you wash it off, it's a little bit cakey in areas and blotchy. And it just looked, it looked a lot darker than this, like probably three shades darker. So it's okay. I feel like I look more normal, but hopefully I just look a little bit sun kissed now. I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Maybe I should just go outside and like actually get sun. That's an, that's a potential option. Um, but if you are interested in a good tanner, the one that I did use is um, Loving Tan, and I have layered it. So this is the second day. Is it the second day in a row or did I skip a day? It's the second day in a row that I put it on. Like I said, if you're just joining, like I washed my face um, before coming on for the live stream. So I kind of defeated the purpose of putting it on today. Well, on my face, but everywhere else on my body, it's it's going to be much darker. Um, but that's okay, because whatever. I can always redo my face before I go to bed if I want. Um, but I kind of like it being a little more natural. I'm rarely ever tan, so I guess it, it was a little out of character for me. Okay, so we are pulling out that extra piece of fabric in the middle. And I did wanna mention um, that I was just watching some old shows before I came on here. And they are so great. If you are really bored and you, you don't really know like what to do with your time and you're sick of everything that's been on, you know, recently uploaded to Netflix and Amazon Prime and all that stuff, I would definitely try to like scroll back into like the older stuff. I don't really know how you have access to them because I was watching it from someone else had it on, but 
If you check out like old versions of Survivor, which I never watch, but it's actually kind of funny. Sun, definitely sun kiss from this angle. Malcolm in the middle. LOL. Ew, no. I mean, I don't want that to sound rude, but I would not recommend going and watching Malcolm in the middle. I didn't even like that the first time it was on. <laughs> um, but I was thinking more like uh, Survivor is what I was watching. And I was also watching um, the real world from the 90s. Uh I don't know what year that I was just watching, but it was like the mid nineties and they were in London. And what's interesting when, if you've ever watched the real world, the real world now always takes place usually in the U S and they're all Americans on the show. And it's much different. Like they have, they provide them with a job and stuff. But back then they used to be seven strangers and since they were in London, four of them were international. One was German, one was Australian, two were from England, and three were American that came, went to, a, like, it was their first time traveling outside the U.S. And they didn't provide them with a job or anything. They actually had to, like, get their own job or go to school. And they actually have to pay the phone bill, like, in the real world house, which is really interesting because nowadays like they did live in a really really nice house but um nowadays it they kind of like provide them with all these luxuries and stuff and like the job aspect of it is barely there and what is there of it is like a job that they provide so just interesting interesting um yeah oh and so that's on the topic of like what to watch like on tv and whatnot but if you are like really into YouTube as I am, I did want to recommend a couple of YouTubers really quickly because I have been getting really into a few YouTubers that I don't always watch or I do watch, but like not as much as recently. Um, maybe because they're posting more frequently at the moment, but either way, I've been loving them. So the first one that I want to mention is if you haven't heard of um, Shalyn Lester, she is so good. She does videos on um, the topic of celebrities. Like she starts off talking about a celebrity and current like gossip story, but then immediately turns it around to like human nature and mental illness or like whatever the topic is. She talks about how you could either be displaying the same thing as a celebrity or like someone in your life could be and kind of just relates it to people in general. So it's not so obsessed with pop culture. It's just that she uses that as like, you know, to get your attention. Um, but also does tell the story of like whatever's going on. So if you like pop culture, she does talk about it a bit. Um, yeah, so that, I have no idea why I'm, like, super into that. I feel like I'm always kind of into um, things about psychology and, like, how, like, why people act the way they act and stuff. So that's probably why I've been getting so into it. But I try to avoid, like, the pop culture piece. But like I said, it just starts out there. So it grabs your attention and then it turns it around and makes it broader than that. So I highly recommend her. She does live streams like every single day and also posts a video every single day. So she is posting a lot right now. Um, another one that I've been super into is uh, Clancy Burke. This one I've literally watched her for years now. Um, and I love her. She's um, a news broadcaster in Ohio. And she just vlogs about her life, her journey, what it is like to work in um, TV news. And um, she does a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But she has been uploading what feels like a lot more lately. Maybe it just feels like that because I'm home all the time. So I'm always able to watch it. But it seems like she's uploading a lot more than she normally does. And she's doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff about like what it's like to be a reporter at this time which is really interesting 
And yeah, overall, I just like her personality. She's super down to earth. She's not trying to be anyone but herself. So that one I also highly recommend. And the last one is just, I feel like, I don't know. I have no reason why, like, I love these videos so much. I don't even know how to explain them, but it's called Fancy Vlogs, I think. And it's Gabby from Nikki and Gabby, the channel, which you not used to is, it is like a really big YouTube channel where they are two sisters and they do like all different types of videos, channel challenge videos, all different things. Um, but yeah, I've been really into um, Gabby's like vlogging channel, um, Gabby or fancy vlogs. And it's just like mainly her and her house or whatever. Sometimes I watch older ones where she's like traveling and stuff. Uh, she does some like challenge videos and stuff even too. But yeah, I really, really have been liking her vlogs. And also, again, I just think it's because she's completely her own and not trying to be anyone but herself. And I just genuinely like vlogs a lot. So if you are interested in kind of seeing what other people are up to during this time, the Clancy's videos and um, Gabby's videos on fancy vlogs are definitely a interesting thing to take a look at. Sorry, I'm like going away. Yeah, that's wild. Bit Boy Meets World. I don't like Boy Meets World at all either. Oh, the first one was Shallon Lester. I can link them in the description as well. Okay, so like I said, I'm just taking out the middle of this, which is like the edge of the pants that I originally cut out, just so it's not um, in the way because we are gonna stick the new panels after they're sewed together in this waistband. Okay, yeah, you said who's the first one. But that was just a little bit of random things that I've been into at the moment. What I really wanted to focus on was um, what I was saying in the beginning, which is setting our mindset and thinking about what is important um, to us all at the moment. I'm going to kind of discuss like what's important to me, but feel free to also like chime in, comment what you're trying to focus on at the moment. I definitely recommend like I might even write some notes about so I don't forget like what I want to focus on. So try to like get in that mindset so we can kind of figure out like what is important at the moment and like what we should be setting our intentions on um, going forward because this is like a really crazy time right now and it's given us more time than usual to just examine our life and watch unnecessary videos, but it's important as, as important as it is to take a break sometimes and just binge watch as much as possible um, within a 24 hour span. Uh, you should also, <laughs> that's hilarious. Shallon, I'll spell it in the chat. So, um, okay, I mentioned in the chat how to spell Shale and Lester. Again, I do really like her videos, and they're really easy to spot. They're, like, white with a pink um, banner over the top of them. They all have, like, the same thumbnail, so. But moving forward, uh, yeah, whatever you would like to focus on, I kind of want to figure out what I should be focusing on. I've done this in the past, 
But I feel like I've just fallen out of it a little bit. And I just want to reset my intentions going forward in the next month. The main thing that I have been trying to focus on, okay, now it's nice and clean and there's no threads coming out all over the place. So what we want to do, I think I'm going to start with the blue pieces. I am going to find all the things that say blue, which there should only be two parts that are blue. But we're cutting everything out twice. So that's, I should end up with four. I don't know why that was so hard. No, it's not four, it's eight, because there's two on here. Okay, eight. Okay, yeah. So the main thing I have been focusing on is, um, oh, do I wanna take the pockets off? Like, what do I wanna do with this? I haven't thought about it. I definitely don't want that on there. Mm -hmm. Actually, it might be fine. Huh. I didn't think about this at all. I did, but, like, I ignored it. Okay. We're going to think on a second, for a second. Um... I do love pockets. Honestly, I think I'm going to take it off and I might put it back on after. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take the seam of the pocket out from behind because uh, it just looks like it's going to be a little bit easier if I do it from behind. So what I have been focusing on over the past week has been trying to fix my sleep cycle, which is completely messed up at the moment. Um, I tend to be staying up pretty consistently until 5 a.m. and then sleeping until noon, which is the, op the opposite of what I want to be doing. And so I feel like if I can just figure out how to fix my sleep cycle, which I have tried going to sleep early, the last two days and I have not been able to actually fall asleep early. So I don't know if anyone has any suggestions. I probably should try to get some sort of like sleepy time tea or something. I might go to the store tomorrow and see if I can pick something up. Um, because I literally just lay in bed for five hours because I made it like a goal to be in bed by 11. The last few days I was in bed by 11 and then I just give up at like 1, 12, 30 at night that I can't sleep and I just end up going and getting my phone and like watching a show or something or talking to someone and it like lasts till th 5 to 3 o'clock in the morning and like all last week I stayed up as well till like 5 o'clock in the morning. So that's frustrating and that is what I'm trying to fix right now because I feel like that's the first step to like really focusing in on what's important for me moving forward because I want to like wake up early in the day and just be able to write chamomile, sleepy time tea, melatonin. I don't like the taste of chamomile is one thing. Um... Melatonin I, has never really worked for me, but I may try it because maybe this time it will. So turning off the tech, like I did start turning off like my phone and then putting it like over, um, like far away from me an hour before I was supposed to like I went to bed at 11, started reading. That was my goal, to go to bed and read and journal at 11 p.m. And then have my phone on the total other side of the room with the alarm on. And like I said, I just end up laying there and never falling asleep. So I get very frustrated. I don't know how you turn the, um, how you turn technology off two hours before you go to sleep. Like, What do you do? Like, you want me to read for two hours before I go to sleep? I don't know, that seems intense.
Oh yeah, that's what I'm trying. Oh, okay, you're saying I'm doing the right thing. Okay. So yeah, that's my circle right now, but I still wanna make these intentions as if I'm going, it, as if that's gonna work out, as if I'm gonna be able to start waking up early because that is my plan. And maybe if I just have a solid plan, a solid foundation, I'll wake up earlier. I take a shower, wash my face, and enjoy tea. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I already took a shower like an hour ago, so I won't do that, but I could rewash my face. The reason I haven't been drinking tea is I just don't have any more decaf tea left. So obviously that's not gonna help me if I drink non-decaf tea, um, but I'll have to get some. I might try kava tea or sleepy time tea. I might get like both. We'll see. In the past, I've always liked kava tea just because it has like a nice flavor. But as far as the intentions go, I'm trying to think like what is important not to me, like besides waking up early, like what do I want to focus on? <laughs> Hey, you said to like shower and wash your face. Like <laughs> that's the most I can give you. Um, <laughs> so what I was thinking that is important to me moving forward is developing my brand, becoming more productive, which is what I'm trying to do like by doing these lives and actually sewing on the lives. And um, becoming healthier. So I really want to start working out more frequently. And I want to be eating better. I have been like eating a lot better. Um, I generally do eat pretty good. But um, also drinking a lot more water, taking vitamins. Um, that's all a focus of mine right now. And also the last thing is obviously focus on your friends and your family. That's very important, especially at this time. So I'm trying to like focus that harder though. Like obviously like those things are all great, but it has my mind like kind of all over the place and knowing how manifestation works and like um, the law of attraction and all of these things, uh, the power of positivity, you have to be focused if you want something to come like, to life that you have in your mind. So what I was thinking is maybe I could narrow down what like what is truly important to me to one word and move forward over the next few months solely focusing on this word and kind of guiding my affirmations towards this secular word. Secular, is that the right word to use? Probably not this one single word. And so I thought about it for a good minute before um, the live stream and I have decided something flashed across my screen, weird. Um, I think that I'm going to use the word free and I'm going to make my kind of like um, motto or slogan or you know, focus of the next month that I am free. And the meaning behind that, because that might be weird um, sounding to some people that I chose the word free. But the reason I chose the word free is because I feel like it can be, um, it can represent so many different things. So to me, it's like, I am free to be me. I'm free to express myself, which has been like a problem for me in the past that like I am so quiet and reserved and it's hard to get to know me sometimes. So um, I am free to be me. I'm free to express myself. I am free to do what I want and I am free to be happy. It's up to me to decide if I'm happy. And I think that's really important for us to like acknowledge and accept that we wake up every day and we can look in the mirror at ourselves and say, today is going to be a great day. Today I'm going to be happy. Today I'm going to be successful. Um, today work is going to be easy. And we have to just kind of put that mindset, you know, 
going into the day. Of course, that doesn't mean you're not going to face challenges. That doesn't mean like that there's never going to be an uncomfortable encounter or that, you know, maybe you do have a really, really horrible job right now. But if your mindset going into the day is positive, you are more likely to have more opportunities to um, express that positivity or that vibe. So that is um, half of the idea between behind I am free. The other really, really, really important part of me wanting to use the word free is that I wanted to use a word that kind of went along that would be able to incorporate finances because I do want to keep that center of mind moving forward. And I have been trying to be really like aware of this over the past year, but I want to, um, what is it called? I don't want to forget about what's important. And if we're trying to develop a brand and be more productive, The main key behind that is that we should be creating another source of income. So one of the things that goes along with being free is being financially free. And if I stay focused and I continue to speak about being financially free, that should encourage more opportunities for financial growth. So going along these lines, now that I kind of like determined what I want to focus on, um, I want to create really strong affirmations to be able to highlight this word and continue to um, draw my focus to it. Because honestly, um, to some people, this is going to sound absolutely insane, but My days are better when I wake up and I do affirmations. When I look in the mirror and I decide what kind of day I'm going to have and what kind of person I am, I uh, that automatically changes the outcome of my day to in a beneficial way. I don't normally look in the mirror and say, you're a horrible person and you're going to have an awful day. (laughs) Um, I try not to use that one. But um, when I do look in the mirror and I, you know, kind of what I was saying before, say, (laughs) um, I'm going to be happy. It's going to be a great day. Work is going to be easy. Um, Things just flow to me. Unexpected things happen all the time. All these things kind of bring on kind of like magically positive experiences. So I want to create some affirmations because I want to be able to stay focused moving forward. And I want to wake up every day and be able to use these affirmations. Some of the affirmations that I use on a daily basis are I am confident, I am strong, I am happy. And um, sorry, something got caught in my throat. Um, I'm confident, I'm strong, I am happy, and money flows to me with ease. Um, What's another one? Those are, those are really, honestly, the ones that, like, come the most freely to me, but I want to create more specific ones that will really help grow um, this uh, focus point. So, To develop the one like money flows to me with ease. Um, You might want to like make it a little stronger by saying money flows to me with ease, making me feel financially free. Um, Another one is, oh, I always like the one I am worthy, I am loved. Um, that doesn't really have to do with my focus point right now, but that's a very important one. Um, and that's one that I have had, um, reoccurring, like I have, um, affirmations that repeat in my phone and those are ones that I really, really love to have. So let's see. I would say, um, one, I should probably focus on is 
being free to express myself. So like I express myself with ease and um, it is easy for people to understand me or something like that. Hmm. I need to kind of think on it for a second. Okay, so what's kind of happening right here is there's these little pegs that hold the pants in place. Like little, I don't know why I call it a peg, like these studs on the pocket to hold the pocket on. So now I have to get those out since I decided to take the pocket off. Okay, are we gonna be able to cut this out without taking the whole pocket out? Because if we can, um, I think we can. It's not that we're gonna not take a whole, we can cut this and we can still get away with it. So I'm just gonna cut around that little circle piece right there. Okay, let's double check that we are able to fit this in this amount of space. Okay, I just need to be really careful cutting out the next one so that we have enough room. That is perfect. Okay. That's going to be fine. Okay, so we are going to put, um, we're going to pin this on here. And then we have to take the pocket off the other side. And we also have to um, get ready the other parts of the pant. So this blue part is gonna be on the edge, so we are gonna keep the front pockets because we can definitely use those. All right, so this is one. That's not fully pinned on yet because we are gonna take the other pocket off before we fully pin it on. Oh my gosh, I ate so quickly. I'm so sorry. I'm like choking now. Okay, yeah, so I am still thinking about what I could make some of them. I'm also trying to think what else I could do to like really reset my focus because I honestly, I feel like this time last year, I was in such a better place as far as mindset was concerned. I was really, really focused on, you know, the law of attraction being positive and um, just staying centered in my head. Um, and right now I've just been kind of like, I don't know, like really just not even focused at all, just waking up late, watching Netflix all day, <laughs> um, staggering onto these live streams or, you know, posting a video before I go to bed. And I just want to like become more efficient in what I'm doing. So I feel like going to bed on time would definitely be great. Reading before I go to bed would definitely be something to improve on. Um, what I'm currently doing. I also think I want to get back into like doing morning pages. If you've um, ever done it before or have not ever done it before, it's um, writing three 
pages of random thought when you wake up in the morning. And it's kind of like a brain dump. It just gets everything out of your head first thing in the morning. Um, they just, three pages usually takes about 15 minutes. That's why I think on average, most people do three pages. Also, it's just from a book. Like I don't, re I really don't remember what book it's from. Um, and I don't even remember if I read that book. I've heard a lot of people talk about morning pages, but the author that recommends morning pages recommends that it's three pages. That's the only reason that I always say it's three pages and people always say it's three pages. Quarantine life. It's not though, because I used to do morning pages all the time and I used to be like, you know, centered, like in when I was busy in my life. And so that's why I just want to take the time now that I do have free time and really center myself and refocus so that I can be productive, like while I'm home, um, rather than just wasting my time. I feel like I've already had like quite a few days where I just allowed myself to do nothing productive. And I really need to have like a few days of full productivity to like balance that out. So I feel like maybe if I wake up early and I um, do morning pages, I think also I need to change my mindset. Like I know I keep saying like I should wake up early. I should go to bed early. But sometimes that really holds us back. If I wake up at noon, I should just pretend it's 8 a.m. Honestly, now that I'm you know, thinking about it, that's really holding me back and making it so that I'm like, you know what, I might as well, it's like already noon, let me just chill, let me watch Netflix for six hours straight, let me never take my pajamas off, which literally I'm still in my pajamas right now. Um, yeah, so I think I need to change that mindset and like no matter, I should write my to-do list but not put times on it and just wake up and do my morning routine at noon, if that's when I wake up. Thank you. Once again, I'm like, not even sewing, I'm just seam ripping. My nose is really itching me right now. I feel like I'm not doing a good job of selling upcycling because I'm making it seem like it's so much work to take clothes apart. <laughs> but it, it is, but it's it's definitely worth it like to upcycle. It also always takes me longer to do everything. One, I'm talking and two, I'm just slow at life. Oh my gosh, why is my nose like literally itching so much right now? That's very true. Um, Maura is saying that even if you start like later in the day, you still have eight hours to like work, um, which is very true rather than like me doing a live stream at like nearly 10 o'clock at night. Oh, it's already way past 10. Awesome. <laughs> What, is, what does it mean it's springtime? Does that mean you should stay up later? Because outside my window, it's a brick wall. So you don't really see a, cha a change of season. Also, so sad. Like, I keep... Oh, because my nose is itching. Yeah. Um, but also, like, today, so sad. My um, Easter sign, I have, like, a holiday sign always, like, outside my door. Or, like, on the outside of my door. And 
I changed to the Easter one a day early. I had a St. Patrick's Day one and I was just so excited for my Easter one that I took off my St. Patrick's Day one a day before St. Patrick's Day and switched it for my Easter one. And then how weird is it that my Easter one fell off today a day before Easter or two days before Easter? I feel like that's so like just weird, weirdly coincidental. Yeah, I got that. It also could be um, me taking out these jeans that is making my nose itch just because um, they're jeans I haven't worn in a very, 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 very long time, like years. So they might be like a little dusty that happens. Like if you never wear things that are in your closet, um, they do build up dust over time. So even if it is your own clothes, it probably is a good idea to go ahead. Oh, nice. Welcome, Jack. I hope you passed your exam. You caught us just talking about... Um, affirmations and all these things, how we can focus our mind. And my focus going into the next month is, wait. Oh, I thought you were saying ghetto to um, the idea that I was focused on affirmations. I was like, that really doesn't make sense. Like, it's not a, a, a good answer. But now I, I'm actually pretty happy because my next door sign, I mean, it's sad. I don't have a door sign right now. And also that my Easter sign is going to not be up for actual Easter, but I probably will just end up switching it out now. And my next door sign is so cute. It's my in-between door sign for in-between holidays. And it is a picture of cactuses that are actually cats. And it says, um, hug me. Which I just think perfectly represents who I am. Okay, so now I am cutting off the other pocket so that we can, we will be able to cut out both pieces for this side uh, panel of the pants. And I'm definitely becoming very aware at this moment. Um, it's cacti dressed as cats. Like the cacti have cat faces. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So what I was saying though is that I am becoming very aware at this moment that I will not have enough fabric here because I have enough fabric for the blue panels and I've double the black panels as the blue panels and I have just enough fabric for the blue ones. So this will be fun. I will have to figure that out in a moment. Okay, so we actually want to put the in the raw sides together. I mean cacti or just to, I mean cacti just want to be hugged 
and cats want to be, <laughs> oh God. Either way, they're both jerks because even if cacti want to be hugged, then um, they shouldn't do it because they're going to hurt people. Okay, so lining this up. Where is the other panel? Ah, right here. So you want to see how much you can get out of this humanly possible. Like, can I actually get out of this all eight pieces is the goal. Is there, is, no, four pieces, four pieces. Sorry, math is clearly really challenging for me, especially today. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can get all the pieces out, but also um, not have... Um, Oh, I don't want that in there. But also not have a hole in the pants because I just left two holes in the fabric. And I think I might be able to just be able to inch it in a way that I can get no holes in the pants. So let's hope. I cheated my entire way through my undergrad, Jesus. <sighs> well, that is really great i hope that you did well and that you're getting a degree soon i feel like that's a huge part though of taking like online classes only like if you're doing online math like can you not look up every single answer I kind of like don't even see the point. It's really unfair to people that actually have to take tests like in class. Okay, so we got the first one. Wait, why did I put these upside down? Oh, I shouldn't do it that way. Okay, I have no idea why I did it that way. That seems really weird. No. So I put the paper upside down on um, the jeans. And just so you know what I mean, this is the front of my pattern. It has writing on it and I put it down like this. I want to make sure I put all the written parts up because then if I do the other ones not the exact same way, um, it will change. It will not be accurate. Some of the pieces will be upside down, like inside out. Ugh. More, you are clearly not an overachiever. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Now I need to change what I'm doing. Can I still make this work? I really want to make sure that the bottoms are lined up because they're feeling not very lined up.
probably should have this laying flat at this point. Okay, so we are gonna do, I really don't like this. Okay, I'm going to turn it the other way. Better. So it's just trial and error, just trying to move the things around and make everything lay as flat as possible. My nose is driving me insane. One other thing I did want to mention that I feel like is not as brainless as some of the other things. I mentioned um, I've been doing and watching is um, I've been listening to the armchair expert, which I feel like I have mentioned already so many times. So some people might be so annoyed by it. Um, just me mentioning it, but they just finished today this series. Um, it was like a mini series within the armchair expert where Monica, who is the co-host co of and producer of armchair expert um, her and a friend, Jess, are trying to become um, better at relationships. One of them has never been in a relationship before, and the other one just serial, like, dates and has, like, has sex way too often, pretty much. And so... You would think they're like on polar opposite sides of the spectrum when, but when like experts come in and talk to them about their struggles, you kind of find out that they're dealing with similar things. And it's just interesting be, and very honest. Um, but, you know, it's just interesting to listen to and kind of see like what their struggles are and you can kind of relate it back to the to your own personal story because it, it is very relatable and also they do like actual challenge between episode to episode. So there was eight episodes of it. They had the last episode today and every single episode they were challenged to do something to push themselves out of their comfort zone as far as dating is concerned. And it's very, very interesting. Now that the whole series is over, if you wanted to one day, like you're busy working on some sort of um, almost like, you know, brainless, tedious activity, you could just put it on and even potentially binge the whole thing. Or there's so there was probably like one episode that I really didn't maybe two that I didn't care for the expert that was talking to them. So of course, if like, you're not into one, you could always skip over it. You'll still get like a really good idea of like what they've been through. But there are some really, really good experts um, on the show. Uh, everyone from, oh my gosh, my nose is killing me. Um, sorry. From Dr. Drew to, uh, who is it that's like really, really? Esther Perel, the millionaire matchmaker, Patty something. That one was a bit like too obnoxious for me. Uh, was not my favorite one at all, but they also had um, Kristen Bell on there and Jack Shepard because they are married and they're very good friends of the couple and the armchair expert is with Dak Shepard. So it was only fitting that he did the first episode. Um, but obviously those ones are a little bit less like experts and just more like friend, friend uh, advice from friends. But either way, it's good to see all the perspectives and some of the episodes are really funny. Some of the challenge challenges were really intense. Like, um, Monica on the show is kind of not the type of person that usually um, puts herself out there and dates very often or at all even until like she started doing the show and her last challenge not the absolute last challenge of the show but the challenge before that was to have um, se sex with someone like online 
because, you know, currently we are in this climate where like you can't really go on too many dates with new people. You mainly have to like uh, FaceTime people in order or do a Skype date or something. Um, so she was literally challenged to have sex with someone on like over the computer or whatever. I'm not saying it like properly, but for her, that was a really, really big deal because she's someone that like struggles with intimacy and she hasn't really dated that many people. So that sounded crazy, but she always does like takes the challenges very seriously and um, actually does them. So that was awesome. Yeah, of course, a Skype day is a real thing, except for I feel like people don't use Skype that much anymore. Like most people are just FaceTime. But like a lot of people, since like they can't see each other right now, a lot of people will like order from the same restaurant and then they'll like have dinner together and stuff, which is actually like kind of a cute concept. So it's already been an hour and I've done a lot of seam ripping, but I've only got one pattern. Well, two pattern pieces, but literally only one panel actually <laughs> done yet. But um, I'm going to keep this live stream at strictly an hour right now. Um, while wow, that's cute to a certain degree. No, it's cute on every degree. What is wrong with you? Now back to what I was saying, which is <laughs> I want to end it with just this pattern piece and keep it at an hour because it is pretty late right now. Uh, it's nearly 11 o'clock, but I'm going to keep working on this and hopefully I can come back to you way closer to the end tomorrow with these pants and we can just finish this thing up because honestly, I want to wear these. So um, yeah, I will talk to you guys all later. Thank you so much for joining me. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Um, it's very motivating. So have a great night. Thank you.